Bonaparte's restaurant is in dire straits. New owner, Sue Ray, has sunk everything into it. It's frustrating the hell out of it at the moment, cos we're going nowhere. The customers are nowhere to be seen. How many's booked? None got Nothing at all? No. Chances of walk-in, perhaps? Slim. The kitchen's down to two staff, and the money has nearly run out. I'm going in to identify the problems. I'll find out if the mark is there. How much do you pay for that? Well, I'm not going to pay a lot, would you? <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Sue? It is, yes. Hi. Hi, pleased to meet you. Likewise. Hi. So, how's it going? Quite quieter today. How many did you have in for lunch? About two. Two, ready? That's it. And last night? Last night, I think we did only two again. That's all. Two customers the two whole customers night? Two customers the whole night, yeah, unfortunately. It's just died a death. Absolute death. The stark truth is that two-thirds of restaurants don't survive past their first birthday. And as things stand, Sue's in danger of adding to those statistics. What are the fridges like? My God, oh my... What is that shit in there? That is mould and fur. Holy fuck! This is a living fucking nightmare! Nobody in this place is taking control. And in this state, a health inspector would close them down without a second thought. I need to check if there's any more surprises lurking in Tim's kitchen. Let's have a look in here. When are they from? Uh, Saturday. Saturday? Would you use them today? No. No, so what the fuck are they doing in the fridge? Uh, it looks like rabbit shit, that one. Oh, this one's stuck to the fucking glass. Yeah, it looks like sheep's turd that's been infested with ants. We've got fucking fur on fucking potatoes. When's that from? I couldn't tell you. What are we doing with them? Throw them in bin. Throw them in bin. But you keep them in the fridge for two days before you throw them in bin. Um, no, but you, do you see what I'm trying to get at? Yeah. Does it yeah. make fucking sense? No, yes or no? No. no. So all this fucking fridge is jam-packed with shit, and we're standing here saying, I'm going to put them in bin. I'm going to put them in bin. Well, get them in the fucking bin! This whole kitchen is disgustingly filthy. In allowing things to fester, Tim's putting Sue's business at risk. Fuck it, girl. Can we get that one cleaned out as well, yeah? Yes. Just one bad thing can contaminate a whole fridge. Tim may as well just chuck money out the window. A health inspector would have a field day. Do you know what? I'm fucking gobsmacked. You know that? I've got a good fucking mind to get hold of fucking Sue and just tell her to fucking close the place. For me. You know that? Because this is the fucking pits. You should be ashamed. Rock bottom. I've never seen anything like this in my entire fucking life. You know that? Because this is a fucking embarrassment to catering. Let alone fucking ringed out fine dining. Let's move her. Huh? Not the best start it could have been, were it? To be honest. Fucking. Like, it's all right. I'll sort it out. The picture's becoming painfully clear. Tim's completely unqualified to do this job. He's blagged his way in, and Sue's been naive enough to take him on. Well, Gordon just had a word with me and said, uh, he's not very impressed. We need to keep the place clean and everything tidy, otherwise I can be sued, in which case I'm out of business and you're out of a job. Realise I'd, that. Yeah, I know, and I've taken this, have to take it on board as well. Well... I you know, just you should have to stick her R in. She wasn't going to say, I told you so, but that's what she was doing. Yeah? Fair <laughs> enough. She had the little dick, so what the fuck her? You know what I mean? Relations between Tim and Sue clearly aren't healthy. But will Sue accept the drastic change of direction I'm about to propose? It's clearly not going to work as a fine dining experience. Does Tim know how much pressure you're under financially? I say flippantly, you know, I'll end up going bankrupt if you're not careful, but mm. he doesn't realise how true that is. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, how close are you in real terms? In real terms, um, probably. I've got probably three months maximum. Jesus. You know, I'm, I'm willing to take constructive criticism. I mean, it's not working, is it? Otherwise, we'd have more people in. The basics are wrong. I mean, the, the basics are so, so wrong, and it's, mm. you know, it's embarrassing. It's what? got to go back to comfort, rustic, easy-going food. It's got to become more of a bistro, because the place mm. oozes that kind of style. I know Sue's convinced, 
But if I'm to flush out Tim's pretensions to fine dining once and for all, I need to provide him with evidence that he can't fail to take on board. Tonight, we've got a table of four in. I want you, OK, to buy starter, main course and pudding. 20 quid. Five quid per head. Right. I want to see how clever you are with that money. Right. Morning. Morning. Come on in, love. I'm making fresh onion soup. Right, we're making some um, French onion soup today, so uh, we're looking for some, like, sort of rustic, like, baguettes. Well, I'll do this baguette here in this window, and that's it. Nice to look at them. Can I, can I have a look at that? Clearly, Tim's never bought anything from a market before in his life. Yeah, never okay. buy them. Discount for the trade? Any discount for the trade? Any discount for the trade? What, a pound? <laughs> <laughs> I don't argue with that. It's always worth buying before you know that. Yeah. So when you're on the telephone in the morning, you're checking with your suppliers and you want to know how much the fish is, you can always bargain with them. I bet you don't treat Sue's money this way, do you? I will do from now on. Fucking right you will. 